Welcome everyone! Today we are talking and discussing the art of providing proper feedback. Feedback can be a life-changing tool and it's incredibly valuable in any learning process, especially for you who are getting into software development. But before we dive into the topic, let me share a personal anecdote that demonstrates the power of feedback. Early in my career as a consultant, I received some amazing feedback. It was deep, challenging and clearly outlined areas for future focus. The person giving the feedback was someone I trusted and I I knew he had more experience than me. This feedback session took place during a two-hour feedback session designed to outline my growth. The mantra at the time was stärken, stärken or improve the strengths. As I advanced to a senior consultant, I took on the responsibility of providing feedback in these sessions. Along the way, I have received feedback from individuals who weren't clearly as skilled at this con giving constructive feedback. This inspired me to create this video to help you to give amazing feedback and support others on their journey as a software to engineer. All right, so let's dive into why feedback is so important, both in personal and professional settings. Feedback is essential for growth as it helps identifying our strengths and areas of improvement. Without it, we may miss opportunities to enhance our skills, learn from our mistakes and achieve our full potential. Positive feedback is crucial as it encourages and reinforces our application accomplishments and strengths. It boosts confidence and motivates us to continue strive for success. Negative or constructive feedback, on the other hand, may seem challenging, but it plays also a crucial role. It points out areas that needs improvement and provides valuable insights on how to tackle them effectively. Keep in mind that constructive feedback should always be given with the intent to help, not to criticize or belittle someone. In professional settings like software development, regular feedback is key to enhance performance, adapting to new challenges and fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement. In personal relationships, feedback helps strengthen bonds, build trust and promote open communication. So remember, both positive and negative feedback are necessary for growth and for the ability to give and receive feedback effectively can be a game changer in your journey towards personal and professional success. Feedback is a powerful tool because it provides guidance, motivation and validation. Let's explore each of these aspects to understand the true potential of feedback. Feedback helps individuals understanding their strengths and weaknesses showing them the areas they need to work on for improvement. It can help a developer recognize a better approach for a problem or learn about unfamiliar concepts like design patterns. Feedback can motivate individuals to strive for improvements and can act as a catalyst for positive change. Acknowledge someone's hard work and progress can encourage them to continue pushing forward. Feedback can validate the effectiveness of someone's approach, confirming that they are on the right track. This can lead to increased confidence, self-assurance in their work and improve their performance. Now that we know the importance of feedback, let's discuss the key components of effective feedback. They are timeliness, specificity, focus on behavior and constructive criticism. Provide feedback as soon as possible after an action or event ensures it is fresh in both the giver and receiver's mind. This allows for a more accurate and relevant response. An example, if a developer has just finished a presentation, giving feedback right after would be more effective than waiting for several days or a year. Be specific in your feedback. Addressing the particular action or behavior that needs improvement or praise. Example, instead of saying great job on the project, say I appreciate how you optimize the code for better performance. Focus on behavior. Concentrate on the person's actions rather than their personality. By doing so, feedback remains objective and avoids becoming personal. An example, I noticed you interrupt others during the meeting. It would be helpful to let people finish before sharing your thoughts. Constructive criticism is one of the hardest. Offer suggestions for improvement and avoid purely negative feedback. Be solution-oriented and that helps everyone. I think your presentation could be more engaging if you add visuals to support your points. Oh, and by the way, since we are discussing feedback, how about clicking the like button and leaving a comment down in the description below so that I can improve my work based on your feedback. I appreciate it. When providing feedback, it's important to use the right techniques. 
some useful methods including the feedback sandwich, the SBI model and the 222 rule. This technique involves presenting positive feedback before and after offering constructive criticism. I liked how you organize your code, it might be helpful to add more comments to explain complex sections. Overall, your work is well constructed and easy to understand. The SBI model, Situation Behavior Impact, this method involves describing the specific situation, the behavior observed and the impact it had. An example, during yesterday's code review, I noticed you pointed out several typos and small errors. Your attention to detail helped improve the overall quality of the code. 222 rule. Offer two compliments, two suggestions for improvements and finish with two more compliments. I liked your efficiency implementation of the algorithm and your code is well documented. But it would help to break down larger functions into smaller ones, more manageable pieces and consider optimizing your code for better performance. Your presentation of the project was clear and concise and I appreciate your willingness to answer questions. As you can imagine, different contexts require also different approaches to feedback. In this section, we will cover some common scenario and how to adapt your feedback style for each. So think about one-on-one -on -one meetings. In this setting, providing direct and honest feedback is usually best. Take the time to actively listen to the other person and maintain a positive and respectful tone. I think that's clear. In a group setting, it's getting harder already. In a group, focus on our overall team performance and address individual concerns privately. Be mindful of each team member's contribution and recognize their achievements. An example, as a team, we have done a great job meeting deadlines and collaborating effectively. I'd like to acknowledge everyone's hard work and discuss areas where we can continue to improve. Remote situations. When providing feedback remotely, utilizes video calls and screen sharing to establish a more personal connection. Be mindful of potential miscommunication due to the lack of non-verbal cues. All right, but now let's add, address some common challenges people face when they giving and receiving feedback and provide tips on how to overcome these challenges. The challenge one I want to talk about is the fear of confrontation. When giving feedback, people might be afraid of confronting someone, especially if the feedback is negative. To overcome this fear, remind yourself that your intention is always to help the other person. That always maintain a respectful tone and focus on the specific behavior or action that needs to be changed. The second challenge we want to talk about is defensive reaction. Receiving feedback, especially negative feedback, can someone make people feel defensive. To overcome this, practice active listening and remind yourself that feedback is aiming to help you growing. Take a moment to reflect the feedback before you respond. The third challenge, unclear communication. Wake or unclear feedback can lead to confusion and frustration in all places. To avoid this, always strive for clarity and specify when giving feedback. Use examples to illustrate your points and avoid generalizations. Challenge four, in effect, feedback timing. Providing feedback too late or at an inappropriate time can diminish its effectiveness. To tackle this, choose a suitable time and setting for the feedback. Ensure both you and the receiver are comfortable and receptive. Receptive? <laughs> Receipted. By acknowledging and addressing these common challenges, you will be better equipped to handle various feedback situations, ultimately leading to more productive feedback experiences. To wrap up, we have covered the importance of feedback in personal and professional settings, the key components of effective feedback and useful techniques for giving feedback, adapting your feedback style to different contexts and how to overcome common challenges when giving and receiving feedback. Remember, giving and receiving feedback is crucial skill for personal and professional development. Embrace it and search an opportunity for growth and always approach feedback with a positive and constructive mindset. As a final takeaway, I encourage you to put these tips right into practice by continually working on refining your feedback skills. Keep in mind that effective feedback fosters a successful collaboration and environment to lead to personal and professional growth for everyone involved. Don't forget to apply what you have learned in this video and share your own feedback experiences down in the comments below. Your insights might be helping me and others on their journey toward mastering the art of giving and receiving feedback. 
All right, that was quite a session, but now here you will find the next video where you learn how to get started with Flutter in 2023. Great playlist, I love it. And on this side, you will learn how to set up and go more in deep with the web sockets in Dart. All right, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. I know it was something different to the other Flutter topics, but thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye.